This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website for artists and creatives to build a beautiful portfolio, engage with your supporters, and expand your business all in one place and on your own terms. Hello and welcome back to another video. You see the title, Another Bacon Draw. However, this one is a bit different. I was trying out some new lapel mics for Steve and I to wear while we were baking to make the audio a bit better and it sounded completely fine in my test video, but it ended up making us sound worse somehow. I have no idea. So, so the audio is going to be a little bit weird at the beginning, but we still had a great long discussion about art block, how we get out of art block, and what it's like to be an art content creator. So that'll be the bulk of this video. So whip out your sketchbook or your apron and bake and draw along with us. This time we are doing the pumpkin cream cheese muffins. I think this is like a Starbucks copycat recipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They're cream cheese, much. yummy, pumpkin, yummy. Can't, Can't go wrong. It. It's fall, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first, beat together cream. No, wait. No, we have to put the ingredients together first. Yeah. Oh, wait, let's preheat the oven real quick. Okay, 375. Yeah. We beat together these things. We just need to put them in the same bowl first. Uh, so okay. cream cheese, white sugar, vanilla extract, and the flour. You want to do the cream cheese cream extract? Cheese. Yeah, I don't mind. Man, I'm just delicious. <laughs> we need to serve this. We need to serve, serve this. <laughs> we got new mic because editing the last video was quite the challenge. So you guys gotta let us know how it sounds. It does kind of sound like a phone call a little bit, but I think it's a lot easier to hear what we're saying. If it so. sounds like a phone call, it'll sound like we're talking with them over the phone. <gasps> yeah, it's more perfect. personable. Hey guys, it's more how was your day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just like so down to we're earth. Just we're just regular we're best friends. Uh, what am I doing? Dump it. Cream cheese. Okay. Yeah, because that's eight ounces. Right? <sighs> oh, the urge to just that was gross. Chomp into this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was birth. Birth. <laughs> oh my gosh! Christmas episode. That'll be fun. Could do Christmas cookies. Christmas cookies. Could do just <gasps> boil some carrots Ginger for a reindeer. Snack. Yeah, mm, I just said boil so carrots good. for a reindeer. <laughs> but that sounds better. I thought they just ate them. The regular like carrots. Yeah. I think I was thinking of a. <laughs> That was that was the bite of now. The bite of the now. Bite of bite 23. Of we wait, wait, to, wait, 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 wait. You can what? show them what it looks like. I think because look, it's one and one. Wait, wait, wait. So I added the sugar, but which was this quantity to, of it. It's supposed to be all the wet ingredients, all the sugar stuff, and then in a separate bowl, all the dry ingredients. And the whatever. We could just do a separate bowl where we have everything else that's wet. Okay. And then yeah. combine it with this. Sounds good. Perfect. Problem solved. This was actually all part of the plan. Look, let me get the sure we, it was. We had a big brain moment. Sure it was sure. We were sure we were marinating the cream cheese with the other ingredients. <laughs> marinating it. Kind of emulsifying, kind of oh. like bringing that umami flavor. Umami. You know? <laughs> Yo mom. Okay. Let's keep going. Light brown sugar. Oh, light brown sugar. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We'll just have to be really careful when we're mixing it together because it already has all that flour in it. Okay. And to a label jump scare moment. Perfect for the season. How bad are baking skills? Are? No, it's just that I guess I got distracted. <laughs> no, oh it's all good. I'm good. It's still gonna turn out yummy. The oil. Glug, 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 glug. Well, okay, we'll just spoon like this very slowly. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It'll be perfect. It'll be fine. It's all good. Ugh. It's all good. You're good. Where's the little spatula thing? So I don't just like... Delicious. Yummy pumpkin. Yay. Okay. There's the pumpkin. It's breathing. Do you see that? Oh my god. It is well breathing. Pulled. It does look kind of gross. It's alive. Close, but it'll look it's good. Perfect for a Halloween episode. Yes. We're keeping it spooky around here. Mm, yummy. Oh, that looks gross. <laughs> Why does that look like that? Because the it's oil. The it's oil. It's combining. the oil. Oh my gosh. Oh. We found oil. Okay. Yeah, we did. We struck oil. Who is going to buy this? What else is part of that? Vanilla extract. Whisk okay. until completely smooth. Should I? Yeah. We're going to wear Okay. Um, I'm reading extremely yeah. carefully now. It's difficult because they have you. Ew. This is making the filling first, and then Why would, all the uh, stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's confusing. All right. What was it? A teaspoon. Oh, it smells so good. It does smell good. It just looks kind of. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, and then we just whisk that together. Nice. Yeah, this looks <laughs> a lot more incorporated now. That looks good. Okay. Okay. So we have all the wet stuff. And then in the other bowl, yeah. we can just add in the dry. Yeah, this is all the dry. And then we can just slowly incorporate this into that. It'll be fine. We can use a spatula. I feel okay. like a spatula would be, be will be best. Some more? Yeah, go for it. 
Yeah, our methods are a bit unorthodox, but I think they're pretty uh, groundbreaking. Still in, gonna taste in the baking. it. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna taste yeah. awesome. Ugh. It's just the I, stuff I think that I, makes. I just had like a the bear moment. And it was like I just <laughs> wanted to show. No, no, no. It's all good. We're co-chef, anyway. There's no superiority. Animosity in the kitchen. No, exactly. <laughs> just good times. You're keeping it spooky though. <laughs> yeah. You gotta keep you all on your toes. It'd be, no, that's too anxiety inducing. I was gonna say, you could like at, at some point put a FNAF jump scare in, but I don't <gasps> think you should do that because I know I would have like a heart attack <laughs> if I saw that happen <laughs> and didn't like expect it. Maybe <laughs> instead of a jump scare, it could be like a gentle reminder. To, to drink like, water. Yeah, or... drink water. Yeah. It's looking good. I almost yeah. feel like it's gonna be like um, a, a cookie batter. Like the way it's getting so thick, horrible, you know, when we're pouring yeah. into the cupcake thing. But... I think it'll get liquidy. It'll just be very lumpy. Love some good lumps. Yeah, see, yeah, it's it getting good. like yeah, liquidy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all good. It's a perfect Trust batter. Trust the process. Yes, indeed. Just like art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trust the process. Who knows how it's going to turn out. But it's going to turn out good because you made it. Oh. Because you made it. <laughs> <laughs> You should be a, a mentor. A teacher. <laughs> mm, that looks good. Yeah, it's looking perfect. Cooking mom mugs. Wonderful. Pumpkin. pumpkin. Oh, the recipe says pumpkin. There's pumpkins in Minecraft, right? Yeah, there are. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Thanks, thanks for that update. I love it. And it happened like 10 years ago. <laughs> pumpkin. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. I was there when uh, horses weren't a thing <gasps> in Minecraft. What a, what a horrible dark age that yeah. was without horses. What would we do without horses? Not get places, I guess. That was step one of like transportation. No, I'd say step one was walking. <laughs> it's the place in a, no, in a we were just like city. completely stationary we just, before horses. Yeah. How oh, much would you get from point A to point B uh -huh. without a pony? American moment. <laughs> you, you think I'm No, that's walk? a Wally moment. Oh. <laughs> to not be able to. This is looking amazing. Yeah, it kind of looks like baby food low key, but it does okay. really okay, good. Hey, baby hey. food. That actually worked really well. Yeah. Good job. It's a pro technique. <sighs> Are we supposed to be? You just fold it in and not like this is useless now. The whisk is the first. Pretty part much. No. Clumps. No whisk. Big, big oh, okay. together and give a smooth that. <laughs> See, we both can't read. <laughs> we both can't. And we balance each other out by catching our mistakes. Yes. Yeah. We catch each other's mistakes. I was like, interesting. There is no air in it anymore. Yeah. This is okay. Big okay. <laughs> okay. You would have failed this cooking mama challenge. No. Enough. Enough. That's the Bob Ross like, never, the devil at <laughs> And then, just beat the devil at her. Titanium quad. quad. It's looking really yeah, good. A, yeah, I would do just a little bit more. Oh yeah, definitely. Because then the lumps will be little... gone. Our cream cheese looks just a little disgusting. It's marinating. <laughs> it's marinating. It is fermenting. It is cultivating something. <laughs> I think it's because the sugar like melted or something when it hit the surface yeah. of the cream cheese. So no, it's, it's okay. glistening. It, she's glowing. She's glowing. She's serving amoeba. <laughs> I don't know. Amoeba. She's serving creatures. <gasps> the dinoflagellate. Yeah. We always come back to you know, the dinoflagellate. Now that it's September, this is the time that they're like glowing right now at that Yo. place. I think it's like the, when the, when it's a new moon is the best time to see those when you go kayaking and stuff. Yeah, chef. Her <laughs> chef. That looks great. I think that's yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Close Let's... up moment. Yeah. I feel like one of the lint chocolatiers. Oh yeah, the commercial. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm one of the kids in the candy shop window being like, wow. wow. Okay, okay, we're gonna set this aside and then we're gonna work on the cream cheese thing. Before we move on, I'd like to take some time to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. 2023 was the year I started taking my art career seriously, and one of my main goals was to find a place to house my portfolio. Squarespace has really clean, beautiful, and customizable templates perfect for any artist or creative looking to establish themselves professionally online. I can easily start creating more passive income streams through Squarespace's ability to sell digital products and even host my own online course. And I'm actually really interested in exploring the option for print-on-demand services to make high-quality art prints straight through my Squarespace Squarespace website, basically eliminating the need to spend time and money on keeping my own inventory, packing orders, and figuring out shipping. I can't wait to finish building my website and use it to reach my career goals for the rest of the year and into 2024, and I really encourage you to check Squarespace out if you're looking to share your art professionally or build your own online shop. So check out www.squarespace.com slash sketches of shade to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using my code sketches of Shay. Big thank you again to Squarespace for supporting the channel and thank you for your viewership so that I can continue to get more sponsors like these and continue to create these videos. Now back to the video. Art block. How? When? Why? 
Okay, that was a good way to start. <laughs> yeah, you, we could address how how, how it occurs to how, us. Like how yeah. have you experienced art block before, and how have I experienced it before, or how people in general have experienced mm-hmm. it? We can compare and contrast our experiences. Yeah. Do you want to start? I've thought about it a lot because I've spent a lot of time not making art in my quote unquote art career, I guess, and in my education. Um, a lot of the art that I did make was for assignments. Uh, so I was being like asked and given a deadline and there was a like academic pressure to finish things. Um, so that was how I was able to still make art while studying, but I wasn't making like personal art throughout mm-hmm. most of the semesters that I've like experienced. So I would say I experienced it in like, I have a lot of personal ideas, character ideas, things that I want to see made, uh, and like none of the, no- the motivation to do it. Mm-hmm. So I experienced like an insecurity of not having the skill sets that would need to be applied to get the result that I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. I would say is like an insecurity is what's blocking me from uh, actually executing those ideas. Mm-hmm. But you were telling me you have the exact opposite situation. I think it's still similar because when I experience like quote unquote art block, it's more like creative block where I draw so frequently that there is a point in time where it becomes almost monotonous, like drawing like the same things over and over again. I'm running out of like the sort of passion or the spark, sort of, I guess. Not really like being connected to any sort of idea and just feeling like kind of purposeless, meaningless. I want to say meaningless because like I still love to draw and I love to create even if it's like not exactly that like um your personal touch isn't necessarily or it wasn't like the original idea that you would yeah manifest Mm -hmm. i think it's just like i get too i don't know i think i just get very self-critical and it just makes drawing not as fun Mm -hmm. fun as it was like prior yeah. so but that's where your like own ideas would make it more fun exactly you're, you're like then, still able to move your hand and everything yeah. but you want to see something that you'll enjoy looking at afterwards mm-hmm. so i don't know maybe like a we could talk about how we have navigated through these mm-hmm. periods of art block and you could maybe um tell me like have you ever written down a bunch of ideas before executing them like yeah. brainstormed before drawing mm-hmm. maybe having like a backlog of ideas or things like a list to look at when you're out of ideas that's something to always replenish that feeling of inspiration exactly um but then do you feel like uh like looking at pinterest or like where do you go when you are feeling that lack of like spark where you want like Um, a good idea and not so much just needing to move your hand i think yeah i'll go to pinterest and look at things that either like from artists i really like or like types of work that i really like Mm -hmm. or just even Taking the time to just watch movies or yeah, play video media. games, yeah, consuming media to like kind of generate some of that inspiration from the things that like inspired me to draw in the first place. Mm-hmm. So that helps a lot. But also just like continually realizing like I can draw anything that yes, I want. Like the power I don't have is to like do a certain thing. So mm-hmm. it's it's kind of just like a weird cycle of like drawing a ton of stuff and then slowly more and more it's just like what am I doing? Why am I drawing this? Mm -hmm. And then just having like another like small epiphany. It's just like, I can draw whatever I want. Whatever you want. Wow. Yeah. Art is so cool. (laughs) I love drawing. Yay. That's that's good. And I think um, talking with other people that share your interests will spark like ideas. Like let's say you share uh, someone likes the Batman as much as you do or likes Hannibal as much as you do. And they're like, but what if they were like very coquette? And what if they were very this, this, that? Or what if like uh, you made something in reference to like a song that you like? Like just Mm -hmm. they'll give you external ideas from the media. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, putting together your interests with something else that interests you. Like a lot of crossover episodes in Mm -hmm. theory would make really good content i would say i also feel like for me there's always like since i want my art to like not just like i want to have purpose with my artwork whatever Mm person purpose that may be it doesn't have to be like some huge like overarching theme yeah yeah but there's always like this like fear of not being original enough Mm. or like not having like a good enough idea like this idea isn't worth like pursuing further or something like that but that's just like a really toxic mindset because that's just like Mm keeps you from like it stops you from pursuing any idea no matter like how like different or like i don't know Mm. small it could be 
So I think that's also a main um, kind of perpetrator. And in insecurity, art yeah. And, yeah, basically that goes back is. to insecurity. Mm-hmm. So, But like artists steal from each other all the time. Yeah. Like that's such a, like that's part of like, art culture is just like referencing yeah, being back inspired to by a way someone yeah. did something i don't think that makes what you make unoriginal whatsoever yeah. if you were to take inspiration or like learn a technique from someone else you wouldn't mm-hmm. say that like a student of an art teacher was appropriating or like taking the idea yeah. from their teacher that mm-hmm. they've just been taught like I, I don't see that as um like theft basically yeah. um but being inspired by another artist not mm-hmm. at all and i think that what you were saying about worrying about your own uh works being considered unoriginal do you mean that in terms of what it looks like or what the concept was i think mainly the concept mm-hmm. i'm not too worried about like like style or mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. like that just concept yeah you have such good ideas. I don't <laughs> see any of that as unoriginal. And in, in fact, I think that when something resonates with a lot of people, that's mm-hmm. not necessarily an indicator that it's unoriginal. Yeah. I would say it's like, oh, this is a banger we all thought yeah. of. And yeah. that's like a hit. Like, that's mm-hmm. a good thing. I don't see that as like, a, oh, I can't have one unoriginal th- or one original thought. Exactly. It's just like, no, this is a, like, sometimes we have communal experiences and sometimes we mm-hmm. all feel the same way about something. But the way that you did it is still unique from the way anyone else would have done it. Exactly. Everyone's going to represent things differently in their artwork. But like you're saying, it's just an insecurity. Yeah, like, I know. I mean, it's, all artists are gonna be like their worst critic and be I like, know, man, yeah. my art sucks. I'm not good. Ah. Yeah, but then that's where, and like I'm, I feel like the, one of the biggest perpetrators of that because I'll feel so insecure about like, oh, I'm not studying as hard as other people are. I know mm. that as like an objective. I'm like, I know that I'm not putting in the same amount of hours or like external studies beyond my university education into artwork and if i did maybe i would feel more accomplished and like feel like i've mm-hmm. gone further in like studying art i guess mm-hmm. but i like i i don't know how to remedy that i'm like i need to do i need to just put in the work to remedy yeah. that i guess i need to be like okay i do have an hour i do have two hours to spend doing like figure drawing studies to explore this idea that i had it's a very hard hurdle to jump yeah though, regardless because i will struggle with like not feeling motivated to create art because I'm stunted by that insecurity of what it may look like Mm -hmm. if it's not immediately something that I'm satisfied with. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's always going to be difficult to navigate. Like I will continue to encounter that roadblock and then continue to remedy it by saying like, no, but I studied for like an hour the other day and I can do it in the future. So as long as you're trying, I guess, Mm -hmm. to like, you know, weasel your way out of an art block, I'd say you're doing the best that you can. Like it's going to be difficult regardless of if it's a stunt in inspiration motivation or insecurity you'll still find a way to slowly weasel out of it it may not be easy but i think it's doable for the most part and it's also starting off small like yes not making it a huge either like time commitment and then realizing you spent three hours like studying something Mm -hmm. or working on something and it's just not like working out Mm. it's just like incrementally like building up the the time commitment mm-hmm. and like the i guess concentration or mm-hmm. focus Doesn't they say that's how like good habits are built exactly you, yeah yeah just starting off small because like it's really difficult to just like jump back into something yeah. and then you get immediately overwhelmed like oh i need to study like lighting effects i need to study mm-hmm. anatomy i need to study perspective and then it just becomes That's like the, everything yeah. is bad about my art i need to fix exactly. everything you gotta focus on one thing at a time yeah. and be gentle with yourself yeah. if it doesn't immediately if you're not like immediately a master in that exactly. aspect of artwork like it's just yeah it's gonna take time and it's so easy to like, especially for me, I'll just be like, nope, that was way too difficult to do. And I'm going to like give up for another like three months or something. Exactly. That's why like, I'm just, you know, I'm very inconsistent with my post graduation studying because of that. Mm-hmm. But it's so important to keep going. I'm like, yeah. it, it's so in retrospect, like looking back, I'm like, why didn't I spend more time recreationally doing artwork? But it's also because I was being so stressed out by that system mm-hmm. academically to be like, oh, I have a deadline. This is due like this week. Yeah. And I'm really bad with time management in that. And just like kind of pushing something out mm-hmm. at the last minute. That relationship that I then developed with making art has tainted my own personal relationship with it, like outside of an academic setting. So I guess part of my journey is like unlearning that and being like, no, this is a accessible to me whenever and this you know is something i can pursue for the rest of my life or none of my life like it's okay it's just something that i can use as a tool to express myself and i don't have to beat myself up over like not being at the same level as other artists my age or younger than me 
or further along in their journey than me like you know older comparison is another one of like the worst yeah. enemies in this mm -hmm. uh yeah plight against art block yeah especially if you're someone who like consumes a lot of like social media yes oh my gosh all yes. the time and it's like you really want to see like these artists their work and stuff because you like mm -hmm. you love their work but then it becomes like a toxic thing where you're just like oh they may be like the same age as me or maybe even younger mm -hmm. and like their work is like years ahead mm -hmm. or just like in skill or in like concept whatever it's it could be really detrimental to trying to practice because then it's just like what's the point all these yeah. other artists are already ahead in their game they're already getting these opportunities or like they're making the work they really want to make while i'm here sitting still trying to figure out how to draw a head in perspective or something mm. like that and it's just like you, you can't think about it like that you have to like it's so difficult but it's just everyone starts at different places and learn at different speeds mm -hmm. and yeah. i don't know you deserve to have your own like voice yes. and all of that no and, one's like, gonna do it like you can exactly yeah and persistence is key I would yeah say. persistence being persistent despite yeah being consistent in your mm -hmm. uh your own craft this one we might have to use the electric okay. mixer for so but i feel like it. we could just do it with our hands one less Without thing to it? clean okay i don't know Try let's me. gauge it <laughs> oh, okay. Block of cream cheese. That is yeast. <laughs> Delicious. Chica moment. Oh, shoot. Okay, we're good. There's no way. I've done this twice. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like 90 degrees. Outside. I was about to say, it's, yep, it's so chilly hot. outside. Yeah, it feels disgusting outside. Yeah. Okay, awesome. It takes a gentle hand to make a fluffy filling. Are there any, like, kind of like more practical tips to get right, out of art block. Like, not like conceptual, like you need to change your mindset. You, you need to like a... step out of the box. <laughs> yeah. And um... create a new box and then live in there. <laughs> <laughs> live in there. Yeah, what's the rent in that box? I hope it's low. Well, okay, what you said was starting small right Sorry, like small. what that looks like practically would be spending small amounts of time mm -hmm. and then also narrowing the scope of your study if that's what you're intending to do in that period of time but then you could move even further back and be like don't do a study right now just move your hand on a paper yep. like you could just completely like primordialize it mm -hmm. and be like do just like do anything like start yep. at the you know getting ink on a page or getting you know graphite on a page mm -hmm. um yeah folding the page just thinking outside of the box thinking creatively and then moving on to like oh well i love this character think within your own comfort zone i would say is also a great way to start like if you have been wanting to make fan art of something if you are watching like a show um if you live in an area that has like nice foliage or something just sort of taking around taking things from around you in your current environment and putting it down on a page Mm -hmm. Those are great ways to just, you know, to start with inconvenience to you. Um, kind of drawing what you see. Wait, drawing what you see. Isn't that what they say, like, not to do in figure drawing classes? Like, don't draw what you see. Something like yes. that. Yes. Yes. Draw how you feel. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Something like that. Um, but Maybe. I think those are, like, really good tips okay. because I do the same thing mm -hmm. because when I have, like, an art block, it's more like an ideas-based thing. So okay. I just revert back to... I'm just gonna like do a bunch of studies or work on more technical aspects just to keep my hand moving, mm -hmm. which is that whole idea of like just getting the bare bones, you're moving your hand, you're like creating something, mm -hmm. no matter like what it could be, just like doing something and kind of like greasing the gears sure, to yeah. get moving. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I love that, that description. Yeah. That analogy, yeah. Kind of like warm ups, mm -hmm. just for like doing a long time. So I think it can be really gratifying too to see. Um, let's say like there's something in your room that you're drawing over and over again over the course of like an hour to see how that drawing has developed compared mm -hmm. to the first one. That's like, those are good boosts of motivation to continue after like starting a warm up and mm -hmm. starting a study. I don't know. I feel like that fills my need to feel like I've improved or like a study has worked, quote yeah. unquote worked, is to like be able to compare with an earlier result of the same subject matter. So maybe that could help someone else as well to do studies of like the same object or person or, you know, environment to have like a, a clear reference of development of your skills yeah. or... I think sometimes what could help with that, it definitely helps with me. I tend to, when I'm doing these studies or those, these warm ups, I get too fixated mm -hmm. on one thing. I end up mm -hmm. spending like an hour or two working oh. on one thing that I just like hate. And I like keep on trying uh, to fix yeah. it. So I think I try to like set a timer for a couple minutes 
and just try and like get things moving、mm-hmm. and not be so precious about each drawing、right. and just kind of use it like these are just attempts. They're not failures. They're、That's, not successes, but they're just attempts. Yeah, and you just like keep on doing them until like you get to like longer periods of time and you become less like I guess like. I wouldn't say like not compulsive, but just like fixated, like tunnel vision on、mm-hmm. like wanting one thing or like on one drawing. Like this drawing session has to be perfect, so I'm gonna like put all、right. this energy into one drawing. That's、mm-hmm. what really gets me a lot of times when I just like start drawing and just getting too fixated on something. When using like a timer, like a minute or like、mm-hmm. five minutes, just like in figure drawing like classes, just to get the ball rolling and、mm-hmm. get stuff done and feel better. Exactly. I like what you mentioned about、um, like a drawing session being almost like precious. I think is what、yeah. you said. Where that made me think that the materials you're using could also affect like how yeah yeah very like, true you know how willing you are to affect that material. So I think something contributing to you know shortening your time and picking a, like a subject matter would also be picking the right like paper、yeah. or the right like medium、mm-hmm. to then create artwork with that you didn't feel like you were wasting materials、mm-hmm. um, if things were not like. That quote unquote perfect, you know, image in your mind or something,、mm-hmm. to be willing to、um, kind of, you know, mess up a paper or,、yep. yeah, not considering it a mess up is also like a, a reframing thing、yes. that you would do. But you know, without getting into like the psychological, just using like cheap materials is a great way to, you know, still be exercising your hand and、mm-hmm. exercising your like creative eye、uh, without it costing anything really.、Mm-hmm. So definitely a good way to. to Continue to motivate yourself forward,、mm-hmm. push yourself forward. That's why I buy like cheap sketchbooks. Love that, yeah. I love like... that you that you say that in your videos and and your tours and stuff.、Mm-hmm. That like these are this is what you value in、yeah. the things that you draw on and draw with. So yeah, that's it's really it's good. It makes、um, drawing accessible and makes、yeah. like artwork accessible to others. So and with so many people who have. I mean, a lot of artists. I'm not saying all artists, but a lot of artists now have like digital drawing.、Tools. Right. Yeah. And you can do like so much. Dog layers just, are like, free. Just like layers, and layers <laughs> of like、free. figure drawings, and then、yes. you just like pick the ones that you like, and then compile them,、mm-hmm. and just like this is what I did for like this ten minutes. Yes, exactly.、Yeah. That's、and、a then, great. And then you、thing. didn't waste a ton of space with using a ton of paper. Storing artwork is one of like the most difficult、mm. things traditional artists like. You'd know. Yeah, you've、with. got oil pastels. <laughs>、yeah. I felt like yeah. It's so bad, but like when you have digital, like you can just like go crazy and、mm-hmm. just do a ton of artwork, and it just pixels like、mm-hmm. megabytes. Yeah, it's just stored. Yeah. yeah, I think eventually you would run out of that storage、oh, yeah, yeah, as well,、yeah. but probably a lot like less,、uh, not as fast as you would run out of paper in real、yeah. like you know. And it、paper. doesn't feel as like corporeal.、It's... Yeah, 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 like tan. I I don't know. Like、mm-hmm. I think another kind of this. Could sort of work. I could. I think it just depends on what type of person you are. But I find that if I just like walk outside,、mm-hmm. do something outside, and just like be mindful of like、mm. the environment and like being outside and being around people, that can like jog a lot of creativity and、mm-hmm. kind of like get you out of your own head of、sure. being like overly self-critical or feeling very like like what am I doing?、Mm-hmm. What? Why am I making this art? Sort of deal. Because I think a lot of us. Uh, are inside a lot of the time,、mm-hmm. especially in this contemporary age. So going outside helps a lot. You just、grass. told everyone to touch grass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say. So what you mean is touch grass, go、yeah. outside. That's such good advice. I love、yeah. touching grass. It's really good. And if it doesn't work, then hey, you went outside. You got a little bit of yeah, vitamin got, D. Yeah, you, you might have like spoke to someone. Maybe there you go. Yeah, <laughs> going outside is, is super. It's good for you. Yeah. Hanging out with friends that、mm-hmm. always helps a lot.、Laughing. Socializing. I know. Just get it. What'd you say? <laughs> laughing. Well, laughing, loving, living. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's really good. I love.、Um, okay, I love my room. Obviously, like I, I love the ambiance in it, and I. This is a space that you know is safe for me. But I love like you know during the day going out into the living room and stuff, and being able to like talk with my roommates and stuff, and、mm-hmm. being able to talk with you. That's like social interactions that I thrive off、yeah. of. I think I need that. I love my alone time as well. But I'm a very like I'll feel enriched by the people、yeah. around me, and I w- I'd prefer that. I I would want. To continue feeling like oh these are people's lives around me that I can you know affect and they affect mine and that's、mm-hmm. a good thing so I don't know I think in terms of art inspiration having that sense of like I don't know other people are alive is a grander like awareness to、yeah. have but it's it's a good one so I think that can broaden your horizons with 
creating artwork and making artwork that includes a dialogue in it as well as enriched by having those dialogues yeah, in person. Exactly. So the best inspiration is like when something uh, funny happens in real life or mm-hmm. you're like, oh, that, that just happened in the kitchen. Let me draw that or like whatever, like mm-hmm. putting your own OC- OCs in that situation. Like that's, I like those kind of stories. Mm-hmm. So, And then it makes yeah. like viewers or like consumers of whatever you're making, it feels more tangible to them because like, right. this is this like, is like I feel this person's heart in this yes. artwork or something ah, like that. That's sweet. <laughs> feel your heart in them. That's really cute. I like that. It's like an actual like physical heart. It's like the reanimator <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we already touched on a lot of like what we do. When we were like describing our mm-hmm. issues, we talked about how we like got around a lot of that stuff. But like building up that consistency can come from doing like an art challenge. Mm-hmm. So with October, I think this video will be going out in October, like mid-October. So a lot of people are doing art challenges. And that could be like a really great way to build a consistent habit or Mm -hmm. to build sort of like a confidence in creating artwork every day. Mm -hmm. But I do think there's like a double-edged sword of like doing a daily challenge and that can often lead to burning out and then being back into an art block burnout state. Whoa, woe is me. (laughs) I can't ever get out of it. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's difficult. But Mm -hmm. I just want to, I kept on meaning to mention this, but... I do feel like with me personally, and I feel like with any skill that you're learning or any habit, Mm -hmm. the more consistently that you build up that skill and prove to yourself that you do it, then it'll be more confidence down the line when you're dealing with bigger projects that it's just like, I will get this done. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it'll be like a cyclical thing where that confidence builds on itself and you become less hesitant with pursuing projects or whatever you want to make. Like when I first started acrylic painting, I was like really wary about like actually like painting on canvas. Mm -hmm. It was like the scariest thing or I didn't feel like it would really be for me, but like having so many years built up of doing paintings on canvas and just like carrying out like full, fully fleshed out ideas, it kind of builds that confidence. And Mm -hmm. now I'm just like, Oh yeah, I could like work on a painting. Like I, nice, I'm yeah. like playing a painting right now. It's just like, oh yeah, I will get that done. Mm-hmm. And it's also realizing maybe it'll take longer, maybe it'll take shorter. But it's just knowing that I will get that done. Mm-hmm. It's just like really comforting because you've had those past experiences of getting it done. Mm-hmm. I like that accumulation of like experience because you're able to have a better scope of time frames exactly. if that's like the right way to word it mm-hmm. like you can now even as like a person who's being commissioned or something be like oh this is my like you can expect to receive this within this allotted time yeah and then that helps you in terms of like content creation as well to be like oh i can make a video in this certain amount of time i can make a painting in this time i can you know you have different yeah expectations of time spent on a project Mm -hmm. because you've done them you've done them before and you've done them many a time each Mm -hmm. so that must be comforting for you to like you know be able to plan as accurately as possible Mm -hmm. um yeah it's not even just like an accuracy thing like that's Mm -hmm. a benefit of it but it's also just like committing time for a large larger Mm -hmm. project that will span weeks it's comforting knowing that i've done that before and i can do it again okay so it's like yes knowing it's not intimidating to start if you know you can finish it it's just like i've been able to manage a project like this before i can Mm -hmm. do it again i think that's really um important to whatever you're working on Mm -hmm. art wise or like creative wise just knowing you have the ability Mm -hmm. to be able to plan out a project and manage it throughout and (laughs) also keep the the fire going or like the motivation going to like finish it and Mm -hmm. see it out that's really important nice and yeah once you like build build out that confidence beforehand and you've done it like a couple times then it just builds on itself and Mm. now you can just like hey i'm gonna do this project and i'm just gonna spend this month planning it out and it'll it will get done yeah yeah by your own accord yeah uh would you say that you're feeling that kind of way about like bigger canvas paintings or something like that because I'm thinking about what what projects are you referring to? Like actually working on a can- like a large physical canvas or I think I'm both talking about like doing like fully finished like paintings either digital or traditional. Right. But that's just like one occurrence like building up that like confidence to commit a physical canvas that I bought with like that was not cheap right. to create right. a piece and like mm-hmm. I know that I can do that again and even with doing the most recent acrylic painting mm-hmm. which is the only painting I made this year that's mm-hmm. been on canvas it was still I was still able to like 
I planned it all out and I knew that it would take like a couple weeks but I felt secure in knowing that I could finish it or and I would like mm -hmm. I will finish it just through like going through the same process and not I don't know getting cold feet and right. <laughs> whatever I was doing so are you thinking of since you just mentioned that this is the one canvas painting you've done this year yeah. next year are you thinking of doing more of that like committing more time to actual physical canvas painting not I, that digital painting is not an actual painting i just mean yeah you know using the those goldens using those tubes <laughs> yeah, that yeah. are sitting Th that there that's someone money on. Yes, yes. um yes i do want to um i i want to try to do i mean i'm already planning a painting right now the bill um i don't know not the bit the miguel one <gasps> oh that's, okay that's a canvas one but it's oils but that's yeah um, yeah and that'll be this video is coming out i have that one going on which i'm just planning out and procreate right mm -hmm. now but the i really want to do a bill painting that's right. like 24 by 48. is that the same size as the science guys or no what's uh, that though Saul is 24 by 36. ah okay so this one's like double the width right if that makes sense yeah so it's like <laughs> a long big painting mm -hmm. and i really want to work on it but it's just once it hits october we were talking about this mm -hmm. like once it hits october time just moves merry like so quickly <laughs> yeah it's basically already christmas right now yes merry christmas guys <laughs> um but it's just i just want to be realistic because i have like all the shop stuff and all the youtube right. stuff which i'm very happy to be working mm -hmm. on i don't want to like complain about it like oh this is so hard but it's just like i want to make sure i'm like creating quality things mm -hmm. to offer to people and kind of balance that and i don't want the art to suffer mm -hmm. just because i want to be able to say oh i finished another painting right so right. it's just a balance of quality but also like understanding i don't have to work on something like right now i can mm -hmm. still keep that idea and still work on it later so yeah. that kind of goes back to what i was saying having a list a backlog exactly. of ideas just making yep. sure that you eventually get around mm -hmm. to them and that's with the miguel painting that i'm mm -hmm. working on because i right, did so that the spider verse like <laughs> yeah paint. yeah so that, that was colors. that was back in july i think i did the mm -hmm. sketchbook spread and now it's october and I'm like finally like ideating and working on that piece so it just takes time you're working on a lot of different things yeah, yeah. it makes sense that there's certain things that can't be juggled like thrown yeah. into the you know the ring so mm -hmm. yeah and you get to them eventually yeah. I think that the fact that you even mentioned it in July and then now are continuing it is a great sense of like it's it's giving you you've committed to what you mm -hmm. said so that's that's a good thing yeah and I think that also ties in back to like building that confidence it's that mm -hmm. commitment to yourself and like just following up on what you say yeah. can be really like pleasing to your brain mm -hmm. or something and I think it's important to show like online to people that you don't have to have an idea and immediately execute on it right. and like get it done sometimes it's nice to just be able to like let it like stew and just like mm -hmm. like roam around in your head and just think about it or just it's okay if you don't have the time now you can have the time later mm -hmm. and i think that's i don't know everything's so fast-paced these days that mm -hmm. it's just like slow down yeah yeah i like what you said about like stewing letting yeah. it stew because along the way you may accumulate like oh i actually want like this posing this color palette mm -hmm. this like these different techniques and applications for that idea that can then enrich it and enrich it further than exactly. what the original concept was so being patient with yourself is probably a great way to like you know let an idea develop itself to mm -hmm. some extent let it be developed by the things around you by your environment by things that you're being exposed to like different media i just love that i love that like you're being a sponge uh, mm -hmm. in the world and you're you know applying those ideas to a concept that you had originally so i think that comes from just caring about what you make a lot mm -hmm. um i mean like not giving everything such like a serious and like meaningful weight like this small doodle like encapsulates my whole career <laughs> yeah. as an artist it's more just like really enjoying to like create and make art and really like wanting to mm -hmm. produce things of some sort of value to like anyone who finds value in right. it and just all in all just being like passionate mm -hmm. and you could be more passionate as sometimes than other times and that's okay that's just like how right we exist we're not always gonna have like the constant amount of energy we put mm -hmm. towards things like all the time but i just think it's you know i think yeah no i get what you're saying i think that we won't always have uh an intense emotional dedication mm -hmm. either to our craft like there's certain days where i'm like oh yeah it'd be really cool 
uh, to like do this specific contour drawing or something, but I'm not necessarily emotionally attached to it at, yeah. in every instance. And in other instances, I'm like, oh yeah, I really like how this got represented or warped by the way that I like looked at it and didn't look at the page and this is that. Mm -hmm. So of course there's days where I'm like, eh, that's definitely a drawing on a page. Mm -hmm. And then other days where I'm like, actually, I love doing that. And that's like something that I love to accumulate and have mm -hmm. like sketchbooks like full of someday. So that's, I think it's fine still to experience days where you're like not feeling as emotionally invested or like passionate, overtly passionate about something. Mm -hmm. That would take so much energy out of me, I think, if I were being expected to be so passionate. But I know yeah. that can also be difficult for someone who's doing content creation and showing their art to an audience. I'm not really showing it to many people or I don't have like a overbearing expectation given mm -hmm. on to me by other people. So, you know, I'm not in the same position as someone who's mm -hmm. like uh, being almost depended on for that content mm -hmm. or like being expected to show what they're working on. But I would hope that an audience would like understand and be mm -hmm. like, yeah, you don't need to be like extremely energetic or extremely uh, invested in what you're doing at every given moment. Yeah. Um, I think as long as you're putting in an effort, that's still worth yeah. it to an audience and you're, you know, caring about what they see and what they think of what you see. But ultimately you need to find the most value in what you're doing. Exactly. And whenever you feel that like, you know, intense expression of valuing your artwork, that's a personal experience. Yeah. That's for you to, you know, continue to motivate yourself to keep creating mm -hmm. artwork. So it's fun to have moments like this, I guess, where you're expressing that like relationship with valuing your art or valuing it in general. And it's not always a, a constant thing. I would say it's always like an underlying constant yeah. thing. We're artists and there's something in our hearts that tell us like, oh, this mm -hmm. is beautiful and I, love, I would want to create something like this. Mm -hmm. But to always have to express it, that's yeah. very taxing. <gasps> yes! <laughs> Goopy! Beautiful girl. They smell so good. Oh my gosh. They just have to sit for 30 minutes, I think. Let that filling cool down a bit. I like it how looks the so good. cream cheese toasted like their merengue. Yeah. Cool. All right. See you guys later. Like you're saying with like content creation mm -hmm. and like having that expectation, like people are like wanting to see this or mm -hmm. like I made this promise and I have to like carry it Follow out. Through. Yeah. There is like a good aspect where it's like accountability. So like if you're right. trying to reach a goal, it's really great to have like a friend or just a reminder that's mm -hmm. keeping you accountable to reach that goal and kind of brings a little bit more motivation in completing it but even if that motivation is like a fire under your butt like yeah, yeah exactly like, I need to get this done yeah literally yeah because some people work that way some mm -hmm. people need that like yeah. kind of push or like that a little bit of uncomfortable uncomfortability yeah, to yeah. like get stuff done and i do find that with basically content creation is my career like I have like become to like sustain myself on it and I like see this developing more into like an actual career along mm -hmm. with my own like selling my own wor work and like just being an artist in mm -hmm. general. It is like really interesting because I do find that I made a lot of work and it keeps me mm -hmm. like creating because yeah. like it's my job yeah. I kind of have to create to yeah. be able to like sustain myself but it's also it can be very uh, uh kind of paralyzing at some times because mm. it's just like now that I have this size of a following it's and I know there's like people with way bigger audiences and you can still struggle with this when you have like a smaller mm -hmm. audience but it's like this amount of people are gonna see this mm -hmm. do I really want to post this if okay. I'm not completely proud of it and if it doesn't completely represent myself as an mm -hmm. artist because like one person could see it and then they comment something like oh this wasn't that good or I haven't had anyone like say something like that but it's always a fear like people are gonna see right through mm -hmm. you and be able to clock oh, they weren't, like, exactly, like, putting in all their effort or, like, mm. this is, like, heartless or just, like, just creation for content creation's mm. sake, that sort of thing. But all in all, I think I just like drawing and art yes, so much that say, it isn't too much of an issue that, uh -huh. like, I see growing in the future. I'm always able to manage it by just, like, stepping away for a second and, like, reassessing my, like, priorities and my, like, values mm -hmm. as an artist and as a human being. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. yeah. You've never sold your soul for something. I don't, I've never seen that. I was going to say, I've never seen you fall into the pipeline of like, I don't know, becoming like a corporate artist or something. Yeah. Like, no, I, I still think that everything that you've e even posted and shared and like that has become commercialized to a certain extent is still a representation of you. Mm -hmm. And you're being a very, you're in a vulnerable spot doing that as well. Yeah. But I think that ultimately making that position 
a part of your career, it's ensuring that you're still loving what you do despite yeah. that expectation to like continue to produce content and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that as long as it's still something that is enriching you and you're exercising your own creative voice, and even in those moments where you are having like experimentation or like academic studies and stuff that maybe aren't, you know, the things that people are used to seeing from you. I would hope that an audience was like, yeah, but she's an artist and she wants to learn and yeah. she's like an intelligent person and I, I want to see her like kind of go through these different, um, I don't know, paths, different explorations of techniques that you haven't used before or like subject matter that you haven't drawn before. I don't know. I find that so like satisfying when yeah. people that I follow are doing things that are out of the norm of what I followed them for. I'm like, oh yeah, like you have other capabilities yeah. and you have like you're a person with so many interests and you may develop new ones and you may drop old ones whatever that's all like interchangeable and i think that if someone likes you and likes you as an artist then they're going to continue to consume your content regardless of what that subject matter is mm -hmm. they still see and hear your voice in it so yeah i don't think you have much to worry <laughs> about in that um your artwork becoming a like a like a sellout kind of thing yeah. i definitely don't think that's the case i think it's like every artist well, I can't say every artist, but like, I feel like most artists With tend to get that, a little, or... yeah, tend to get a little like weird about selling their art sometimes. Mm. Cause then, then it's like this weird thing. It's just like, you're, you're creating something, you're drawing something and you're like, Ooh, could I turn this into a sticker? Or like, right. could I like somehow monetize this in some way? Uh -huh. And sometimes that just feels a little icky, You feel a little Lorax O'Hare, yeah, like I'm like, selling air. Do I really want to yeah. like, especially when it becomes more personal artwork, mm -hmm. like, I, I have begun to share more about like Bill and Saul and stuff, mm -hmm. but a lot of my like original characters are really like personal to personal to me. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes I'm like, maybe I don't wanna continue to share more about them because it's like what almost you, like and... these are my children or like right. these are my babies. Like I don't want them up for criticism so early sure, in their sure. development or I don't it feels weird to I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but it's I can see what you're saying. Yeah. A lot of like what they represent is uh, personal to you. Yeah. And that's like something that has come from your own life experiences. And so exactly. in a way you are, you know, selling merchandise or things exactly. of them is like, a you know, it's a little bit, I don't know how to describe that, like how to word that but, feeling that that's you yeah. being sold or something like. But that's like an artist in their work. Like, where do you, like, is there a separation? Like, is an mm. artist their work or is can you have a separation like um can you like the art without um supporting the artist like if there's like really problematic artists but their artwork r mm. speaks to you and is really meaningful this happens a lot in music sure, um yeah it's like how should you separate that can you separate that uh you the artist yourself can you like depersonalize yourself from your art so you can like be able to um share it with it's that's a complex it's really topic. crazy yeah. yeah it's really it's interesting to think about because sometimes bill and saul could be just these two goofy cowboy characters <laughs> yes, okay. that I like to draw and people enjoy seeing them and it's fun mm -hmm. but i also i know that they came from a point in my life that was very vulnerable and it was very like needing like a sort of like safe space or like mm -hmm. intimacy and a lot of work came from that using them as like a conduit to like share that message that mm -hmm. i was feeling i always think that when i produce something i could have it i could have a my own attached meaning to it but like an audience once i send it out to the world it's theirs like they right. they can attach any sort of meaning or like do anything that they want with it mm -hmm. but it's just like it's strange sometimes thinking that oh this piece of artwork may be hanging on someone's wall or mm -hmm. maybe on like a sticker on someone's but, sketchbook yeah you don't think though that someone let's say like you're telling me this now and then you're telling them this now and you have spoken about this before right in your video mm -hmm. introducing bill and saul i don't think that someone who has them on their wall now would think like that they're just ocs or just maybe mm -hmm. they are you know what that's fine that's no, fine to back for that reason yeah but i think that someone who was like you know committed to having watched the content being like oh, i mm -hmm. really love these ocs would to some extent feel like that they resonated with what they stood for and what they represented in your life and what they represent like you know to them specifically yeah. and i i don't think that you give like what you said like giving them to your audience is you losing them either exactly. like if they exactly. still mean a lot to you that's the most important thing exactly. and i don't think that you uh selling things that you know have them on it is, is making, uh, by any means making, giving them control yeah, over yeah. your characters so yeah or over your like experiences yeah. they uh you know what other people experience and how they 
you know, attach themselves to those characters should not affect how you've attached yourself to them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I don't think that, they, um, that they're being given away no. necessarily. I think that was like a weird way of wording it. It's, oh. I agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, it's more so like there's this constant duality where it's just like all the art I make, just a fun time. We're doing mm -hmm. like goofy drawings, characters. Okay. Um, my stickers are like cute and they're like, um, a lot of them are for more like decorative or aesthetic reasons, mm -hmm. like with most stickers. But when it's like crossing into like my own like personal body of work and like creating like uh, stickers or like prints off of that, it's, it's both like, this is like fun, colorful artwork. I love sharing it with people. I love seeing people enjoy it as much mm -hmm. as I like to create it. But then it's also like there's so many people who are like enjoying it now that it's kind of scary to continue to create sort mm -hmm. of. And I don't know. It's that's a big topic. It's more than just art block. <laughs> yeah, it's a big topic. But then I'm just like, I'm just going to post it. You, to some extent, I think a part of you is like getting used to it. You're in a period yeah. where you've never had this type of following before. Yeah. Never had like this many eyes on you before kind of thing. And I know that could be really scary. Not mm -hmm. know from like an empathetic type of way. I've never experienced that. But I could imagine very easily yeah. how that's intimidating, the numbers and everything like that. But it is also probably very inspiring that a lot of people, that amount of people can resonate with what you're making. And mm -hmm. it could be very gratifying as an artist who, you know, wants to share that artwork to be like, wow, look how many people mm -hmm. are like experiencing the same thing or being able to like emotionally connect with your artwork. That's mm -hmm. a very like strong and good thing that's mm -hmm. happening. I know it's still very scary, but I think ultimately, or at least in the long run, or just sort of like beyond the fear, it's a very like, satisfying thing mm -hmm. i don't know if gratifying is like the right word but well the thing is like if you are making art your like career being an artist mm -hmm. like you need an audience to yeah. like yeah. view your work so it's like i don't know it's strange because it's just like yeah i want to be an artist i want to be able to like live off of my art this is mm -hmm. so cool it's so crazy that we get to do like i could get this opportunity to do this but it's just like i don't know it gets strange sometimes mm. But I feel like a lot of people who have, who post their work online go through the same stuff, mm. you know? It's not like, like, so detrimental that I, like, don't feel like posting anymore. Mm. It's just, like, knowing that you're creating for an audience is different than creating for yourself and just mm -hmm. putting it out there. Absolutely. Yeah. TLDR. <laughs> TLDR, yeah. Let's <laughs> say a little summary like that. Yeah, it's good. But I'm still gonna do it. I think you're kind of like right now in a, you know, how like when you buy a new fish as a pet or something and you have to like acclimate them first yeah. before being like thrown into the water. Yeah. I think you're in that period of acclimation mm -hmm. where getting used to what having an audience is like, what interaction with them is like, what they enjoy seeing, what they expect mm -hmm. from you, what you feel like creating at all, yeah. like on your own accord. Um, I think having this period of acclimation is okay and it's okay to be fearful of that number, mm -hmm. but then to help like with you know navigating out of that fear kind of thinking in retrospect like oh like that's a lot of people who are very similar to me or mm -hmm. that you know want good things for me like I think very positive feelings can come from numbers like that mm -hmm. and instead of seeing large numbers as scary seeing them as like great opportunities is another not like merchandise not like oh these yeah. are like you know people who are going to be sustaining me people who are like just I'm able to connect with people yeah. in the world that are very similar to me. That's a very like, you know, helps you not feel alone type mm -hmm. of, you know, kind of feeling. Yeah. So I don't know, I think there's positive things that come with that. Plenty of positive things. I think just marketing yourself is just weird as well. It sounds weird. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like there's a lot of mm -hmm. nuance in being able to feel very gratified by large numbers and mm -hmm. feeling very crushed by them. Exactly. So it's like, and it's not a personal thing. Like you're mm -hmm. not like feeling crushed by like a person. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I'm being crushed by the weight of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like it's a different, it's not like a one-on-one -on -one type of experience that you have an issue with someone. It's like, oh, I'm kind of still not quite used to having a thousand eyes on me like yeah. that kind of thing yeah and i don't think that it would be fair for people it wouldn't be fair for people to uh expect like a quick acclimation yeah. like to expect you to just be okay with that right away mm -hmm. um i don't think that's an entirely fair assumption mm -hmm. to make especially uh, if you haven't experienced that yourself so i think mm -hmm. some of the people that you can you personally can resonate the most with would be people who have also made content before mm -hmm. and like accumulated large audiences and stuff um and maybe are also in that period of acclimation where there's yeah. still you know growing and mm -hmm. learning so 
I do get some comments sometimes where it's like people wanting to start their own mm -hmm. like channels and stuff. I think that's great because it's just like it's so cool to like start making like video content for like other artists and just like contribute to like the art community. Mm -hmm. But um, something like about this like this whole thing about acclimating mm -hmm. a bunch of like larger creators, not just in, like the art community. They say like you want to be able to grow slowly and like mm -hmm. over time and not like kind of blow up Go or viral. like viral because yeah. it's just you're gonna like one day you post and you have like 10,000 subscribers and the video goes crazy and now you have like 50,000 mm -hmm. and now it's just like there was no period of yeah it's just like who what what's going on here and then you get so such stage fright mm -hmm. posting the next video yeah stage and fright yeah it's just like oof but yeah I just feel like strange Strange. These things are getting stranger. <laughs> you guys are very weird. Very weird. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I don't like that. Yeah, don't look at me. <laughs> but it's fun. I'm very privileged to be able to do this mm -hmm. and make this a potential, like, sustainable career. And I don't ever want to take for granted, like, people's support or mm -hmm. any of that. So You're a very appreciative person. I think it's because I grew up so long being an audience. Mm -hmm. Because YouTube has, and you could probably relate, YouTube has been such a big part of our lives growing mm. up as being like Gen Z kids mm. growing up in a more digital environment and getting so much like alternative media from YouTube. Right. That it's just like, it's kind of weird. Like I watched content off of this platform for so long and now I'm posting on it. So it's just very much like... I still just feel like an audience member, mm -hmm. and I'm just like posting my own videos. You are but still one, as yeah, well. yeah, like, I there are am. People you yeah. watch consistently, FNAF lore videos. <laughs> you are an audience <laughs> member of the FNAF lore audience. Yes, oh, you are a proud member. All that I watch. Exactly. No, yeah, <laughs> you're still an audience member as well. But it's just it's strange, and I think that's why I like have such high respect, or I don't want to um, disappoint or. Mm -hmm annoy my audience with like monetizing certain things mm. or like selling things but they're there because they want to support exactly. you so yeah. it's not an annoying thing to be like hey do this thing that you're here for like yeah. no that's not annoying yeah or at least the way that you've done it has not been annoying i'm sure there could be like you're not a commercial yeah. showing up and interrupting their thing so they're like, following you because they want that consistent update of what you're up to and what you could offer for them so mm -hmm. that's a good thing all right time for the cross section what would be Which the one? victim? One of the ones that like the cream cheese is the most central. Please. This one? Sure. Yeah, let's go for that one. Okay, I'm gonna undress it. <gasps> Aw, it's so cute! No tiny! Yeah. Beautiful! That does look good. Now we're gonna try it. You wanna dink it? Dink it. Hold on, wait, get it in frame. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay. Nice and moist. Mm -hmm. very yeah, very, good. very. The cream cheese. Mm -hmm. The cream cheese is so good. It tastes really similar to the snickerdoodle, just in like a cakier form. Yes. I guess that pumpkin puree just does something good. Mm. 10 out of 10. Recommend. Very moist. That's probably the vegetable oil. <laughs> Delicious. Oh. Awesome. It is really good. good. I hope our discussion about Art Block was helpful or made you feel less alone in your own art struggles. Art Block can be extremely frustrating and scary if creating is a huge part of your life and your identity, but I want you to know that you will get through this by being patient, gentle, and consistent with incorporating art back into your routine. Also, I hope my insight about being a growing art content creator was a bit insightful as well. I was a little bit hesitant about including it, but I know a lot of you guys are interested in pursuing your own online career, so let me know if you found it interesting. I really loved making this longer style kind of baking and art session, and I hope we kept you company while you were drawing, baking, cleaning, or just relaxing. All of the art that was made during this video is up on my Instagram as well as on my Ko-fi, so make sure to check it out. And once again, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check out the link on the screen and down below Below in the description, that's www.squarespace.com slash sketches of Shay to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code sketches of Shay. 
And another big thank you to Steven for joining me for this episode. I always love having him on the channel and making videos with him. And if you want to see his artwork, I'll have his Instagram link down below. He has really great work. And another big thank you to my Kofi members for continuing to support my channel. Your support really helps me to continue to make content like this. So, so if you want to help out the channel and gain some benefits like sneak peeks, painting and drawing Q&As, exclusive ghost cowboy stickers for the month of October, and sketchbooks scans, consider supporting me over on Kofi. Shout out to my sticker club members, which we just reached 60 members. How the heck did that happen? Thank you guys so much. So shout out to Air, Alien Kid, Elisa R, Anna's Confused, Artist Life 03, August, Blue Swanson, Brendog, Buckley, Kaylin D, Candon Courier, Charu, Dasi, Demon Sketchnin, Emmy, Emily, Emma, Erasu Stuff, Gabriella C, Grace, Heather C, Ink Palette, Izzy, Jason, Jordan, Julie, Katie, Kent, Crisp Jean, Seams Creates, Laura C, Leslie, Liesl, Liz, Lucas S, Lux, Mar, Max Decided, Mayday V, Mika Lika, Moth, Mr. Goat Was Here, Nat, Olive, Olivia, Amori, Pilot, Pixie Boo, Red, Roses Are Purple, Rowan, and Ruby T. And shout out to my Snickerdoodle members as well. Big Chungus, Chipu, Cup of Honey, D'Andrea, Dale and the Cow, Aaron, Catherine F, Mango Dust, Nicole Nader Art, Peachy Pie Peeps, Rin Kenobi, Soft Lesbian, Star Gamer, Tammy, Tasty Battery Acid, Tephoric, Vixen, and Valency. Thank you guys once again for supporting the channel and my artwork. I'm super excited for the plans that I have for the rest of the year with this channel and with my artwork, and I can't wait to share those projects with you guys. So, all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Go drink some water, stretch, bake some muffins, and make some art. All right, bye.